guys all for coming tonight. Um, tonight's home security presentation addresses weak access points to homes, crime statistics, and how having a home security camera system will help protect your property. Uh, in 2017, there were 71 reported burglaries and 170 reported vandalism complaints in Groton. Over the years, I've responded to many burglaries and larcenies to homes, vehicles, and businesses. One thing is always common with victims of these crimes, an intrusion to your personal space shatters your sense of comfort, privacy, and security. Responding to these situations when homeowners have taken precautions to protect their homes with camera systems increases the solvability factor immensely. Camera footage is the best evidence you can have in catching a criminal and getting a conviction in court. Surveillance systems can make you a first responder and give you the opportunity to have a proactive approach to the safety of your property. Uh, with that, I'd like to introduce Christopher Kidd with Arlo Security Systems. Thank you. So, uh, thanks for having me. I'm from a company called Netgear. I'm what you would call kind of a home security and surveillance, that kind of thing, an expert. So let me talk about a little about why people might be interested and in kind of reasons people have in general for wanting to look into how they can make their home a little smarter, a little bit more secure. These are some uh, kind of eye-popping statistics that happen around the country. This is not specific to this area or even the state, but we have a burglary that occurs every 14 seconds, a lot of victims, a lot of victim mentality. You kind of kind of feel like you get a little out of hand and you can feel like, why is this happening to me? And I feel very powerless to stop it. Oftentimes you might turn to something like video cameras just so you have a little bit of evidence, a little peace of mind, something to give to the police and give them a heads up and help them solve, get out there and solve the crimes. This is kind of a good slide to show where people break in. So we have, as she said, you said 71 burglaries. That's probably just what people report there. Are probably a whole lot more than that. People just kind of chalk it up to a loss. Believe it or not, the front door is still where people go through. Um, they're not going to worry about making a lot of noise. They're very brazen. Oftentimes it might be a package theft. It's also something that's kind of factored in here. The back door, people feel less likely to break a window if it thinks it's going to be very, very loud, but that doesn't mean they don't give it a shot. And then you have this group on the second floor, which I have to point out that there are actually people who are so determined to steal from you that they are willing to climb up to your roof in your second floor by a fence or however they do it. It's pretty amazing considering they will break your window through the second floor. We saw this in Newport Beach. There was actually a house where they had taken the garden hose that had one of those sprayers, so a hook on the end, thrown it through the second floor and climbed up it. It's like some Mission Impossible type stuff just to get in there and steal their, their jewelry. You can also use that slide to kind of understand where you might want to put a camera or cameras or security device. It could be sensors, could be anything to try to steer them away, loud noises, get evidence. We actually asked a lot of people, you know, what do you think? Why do you want your home to be a little bit smarter, a little bit more secure? And we got a lot of different answers from simply to make it more secure to other people who wanted to make their home smarter. So sometimes you might have different integrations and be able to talk to something like Amazon Alexa or Google Home, I'm not sure how many of you have that, and say, Alexa, turn my lights on. And I did this. I thought I was the coolest person in the world. I could open my door, say, Alexa, turn my lights on, and the lights would go on. Until one day when the Wi-Fi went out, and I walked in and I said, Alexa, turn my lights on, and there was nothing. And I had to go and push the button. It was a horrible experience. It was terrible. But your smart home can become a dumb home very, very quickly. The rest of it was for remote activation, so being able to be anywhere in the world at your work, traveling, vacation, even overseas, and you'll be able to access and connect to your home remotely. Thermostats, cameras, sensors, all of those things fall into this category. The idea behind security is to try to stop crimes before they happen, deter them to go somewhere else. One thing that we found, and we see it to be very true, is if I am intent on doing something bad, I'm a, a burglar, a vandal, any kind of criminal, and I walk and I see a house that has security cameras and a house next door that doesn't have security cameras, I'm going to pick the house that doesn't have security cameras. I don't want to be on social media, on nextdoor.com, on Facebook, with my face plastered everywhere for law enforcement community members to see, especially when it's getting shared tens of thousands of times. Some of those posts have millions of people seeing them, and if you do something dumb, like you slip and fall or you break your leg when you're trying to steal a package, you're going to live on an infinity in the world of viral social media. So let's stop crime before it happens. There are many different options out there. I work for a company called Netgear that produces a product called Arlo. Arlo is a great camera. There are other great cameras. There are motion detection. There are three different types of cameras from a high level that I would say are popular for your type of security. 
a wire-free camera. A wire-free camera is something that can be placed anywhere, usually within reason, uh, a distance of a base station. And I'll kind of explain a little bit more about what that means and how that works. A wired camera, which is something that you have to plug into a wall. For something like outdoor use, some people stray away from wanting wired cameras because it means you have to drill a hole in your house, whereas a wireless camera, you don't obviously have to do that. A little more flexibility with those type of products. Power cameras also include something like a doorbell cam. Ring and Skybell, jumping in popularity. People like when they push the button, and even when they're just detecting motion, how they have a recording. They're able to have a two-way conversation. That's all things that are good. I'm not at dinner. Or even maybe you want to scare somebody off. They hit the door, or they start kicking through the door, and you yell at them, go away. Sometimes it's enough to scare them. Move on to the next house. Not easy here. And then mobile. Mobile is something of a, in its infancy. It's very, very new. Uh, one of the products that we have that I can explain in more detail if you want to hear, it is LTE-based. So no longer do we, are we tethered to Wi-Fi or connection. That means that we can take this camera, this mobile wireless camera, battery operated, and take that camera anywhere that has some sort of cell signal. Think about wildlife, think about camping, think about hunting, all those situations where you want to keep an eye on game or cars or anything like that, but not be near it and not be tied to Wi-Fi. That's something new, uh, something that you can go with any three of these actually, night vision, battery life, that kind of thing. I can talk more in detail if you have questions. Applications. So that's how you kind of, a lot of these different smart home devices, they don't necessarily go through a desktop computer. You can access them there. But more of the strength is going to be in being able to remotely act, activate it and watch it and control it. That's through something like a smartphone, a tablet. Those are the options that you have for an application. You should never pay for your application. If somebody's charging you for an application, it might be smart to look at it, other options. And then cloud storage. So there are ways to locally back up data. That means that you're taking the data, the cloud, the video, and you're storing it all in a local backup or on a hard drive. But nine times out of 10 in today's modernized society, you're going to see cloud storage. Cloud storage varies based on how much you're going to get charged. Typically, it's a monthly charge. Some companies charge nothing. Other companies charge as much as 10, 20 bucks a month. So it's something to factor, something to consider when you're considering what do I want to buy. How much do I care about paying monthly? What can I do? What are my options? These are kind of the specs. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you have different types of video quality. So the bare minimum usually starts out something like 540 up to 720 in extremely high definition at 1080. 1080 is now available and wire free. 1080 is something that's relatively new to the industry. How many degrees of angle? This is how much you see. So if you put this camera up here, you're, on an average basis, you're going to see something between 130 degrees, minimum 110 degrees, max about 180 degrees. The doorbell cams, if any of you have them, you'll realize that it's kind of more wide open, and you're seeing almost like a pixelated, distorted view. You still see everything, and you see it in pretty high quality, but it is a larger field of view. You always want your cameras, especially your outdoor cameras, to have night vision. It's going to be a situation where you want to turn off the lights, you still want to be able to see what happens, have a clear face, in some circumstances a license plate, dependent upon where you point that camera at. Uh, different storage, I will say it again, free is better. Do your research on what companies have free cloud storages versus how much they charge per month. Sometimes they have rolling services or 30, 30 days free or something like that. But it's just something that you do when you do research on what you're looking for, that's something to consider. The siren, I'll explain a little bit what that is. So essentially, if you get a wireless camera, completely wireless, weatherproof, your outdoor camera, especially being in New England, has to be weatherproof. A lot of cameras will go down all the way to negative 4 degrees, all the way up to 122. I understand that there are going to be times when it does get a little bit colder than negative 4 uh, here in Connecticut. I'm glad that it wasn't while I was here. Uh, but those cameras will sometimes need time and to heat up. You can alleviate that by putting it under an eave or an awning where it's just a little bit warmer and all you need to do is get it to that threshold. Sometimes it'll work at negative 10. Sometimes it won't. That's just something that varies with most cameras. Uh, these are some of the accessories that come with them. So your wireless cameras, there are always going to be different ways that you want to mount them, different ways you want to have them hanging, different ways to charge them. So if you want to use it outside but you don't want to ever have to worry about a battery, you could buy an external charger it's always a smart investment, or a solar panel, or different ways to mount them, be it magnetic, be it a screw mount, something more secure. Some people are a little bit worried that if I have my camera sitting right there, and it's just on a magnetic mount, that somebody might reach up, grab it, 
and walk off for it. We find that people don't really steal cameras. We've only ever had one case of a camera being stolen, mostly because as soon as you're here, your face is already recorded, you're already in the cloud, and they're already notified that you're there. That camera essentially becomes a brick when you walk off with it. There's no reason to take it. That being said, as the police can surely attest, we do see some criminals that are not geniuses. It does occasionally happen, hopefully more and more. Different ways to disguise the camera. Now, I'm a firm believer that if you're going to put these on your house or your small business or wherever you might have in mind for these cameras, let people know you have them. I have a camera. Go on. Leave me alone. But it's also a good idea that maybe you want to hide them. Maybe you want to have three cameras where it's like, I can see them. They're obviously there. But have one camera hiding in a tree, hiding on a fence. There are different ways that you want to disguise them. Obviously, we have this super comical looking my hair looked like that in college, what we call the ghillie sock. And the ghillie sock or the ghillie suit is designed, uh, we actually work with some uh, military members to design this to be very, very similar to what they're wearing when they're snipers lying in an open field with brush to try to blend in and hide. I will tell you this, if you put that ghillie sock on the cameras, and there are cameras in there, and you put it in a tree, it will be very hard to see them. And I'm going to prove it to you. This is the second one. This is another camo skin, but in a lighter shrub. And that, where it's almost completely invisible, is the ghillie, is the ghillie suit. It's just blending in with the tree perfectly. If you have a property that has a tree like that, house, maybe you need a camera for your front door, camera for your back door. You can think about a camera for your cars or side yard. Most people find they can get away with two or three and have one hiding in a bush somewhere. And then once you find that you put these cameras up, you're going to see a lot of weird things. Some of them are funny. Some of them are not. These are some of the videos that we've got submitted. I, took, I just chose a couple of them, and I'll, I'll show you. This guy was pretty determined to break into this poor family's house. Meanwhile, if you have a camera like this, and this person in particular has already been notified that there was motion and moving, he's probably watching this recording laughing a little bit at what he's doing. He could even be yelling at him. If you see this happen, a lot of cameras and or the base station that you need to plug in will actually emit a 100 decibel siren. So when you're watching this happen, you could literally be yelling at him. Maybe he stops, maybe he runs away, and then you just turn the video over to the police and laugh for a while. Or if it's not stopping and he gets through like that guy did after what it was with 10 or 12 effort, effortless tries, you can push that button and the base station will emit a 100 decibel siren. You might catch something like this, a little cuter, a little, little raccoon looking to catch food, whether that's the cat's food or whether they put it out there to try to get some animals out there. And the last one I'll show you, this is an older camera, but you can see it's very strong. You're going to see a very, very clear face, runs up, grabs the packages, runs back to his car, and drives off. And I think that you said they caught him 45 minutes later with a good description. Yeah, we, we ID'd him within like 45 minutes. That's an awesome story. You know, to be perfectly honest, you got us kind of pumped up at, at Necker because it's, it's not every day you catch the person. Oftentimes they're coming from, and, and you probably know this, they come from Hartford or somewhere very, very far away. And the only reason they're there is to break into your house, steal things, and then go back to Hartford. And they might have local police that know about it and even neighboring, neighboring police. But the reach only goes so far on who you can tell and how you can let them know. Social media is one way next door. They always be posting things. You know, put those people on blast. Make sure that everybody knows who they are. The power of social means that you can share something here, then somebody else shares it, and all of a sudden you're reaching far corners of the United States and even in the other parts of the world. So that, that's really all I have. There are different types of security integrations. That if you're more tech savvy and you want to know about, I mean, I'll give you a great example. So, I am uh, hearing impaired, a lot of my family is, and one of the things that I wanted to do is create an integration between the smart camera and light bulbs. So Philips 2 and LifeX, they make smart bulbs that are actually remotely activated and can be controlled by an application. So I created a recipe using a, a, product called, or, sorry, a company called IFT, and what it, what it is is it creates a combination between Arlo and LifeX where when motion is detected on Arlo, 
your, your light bulbs will flash a certain color. So if you're hearing impaired and you're sitting at home watching television and all of a sudden your light bulb flickers red, there's somebody at your front door. If the flicker is blue, there's somebody at your back door. So it's something I'm very passionate about. There's other things that you can do with it. You can play music. I've heard of somebody setting it up where there are no uh, here's mo or, I'm sorry, detects motion, that it'll play the stereo, loud dogging, barking sounds. Thank you for your time. Any questions, feel free to come up and ask.